And I said, how much is four new tires for them? And I said, here's my credit card. Yeah. I, you know, I, I I never asked. Uh, no, I know I know that brother. You but you've you, done that ever since I've known you. You 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 get into law enforcement. Well, to truly help, you do. You did back when we started. Yeah, you get in truly help. Now these academies teach arrest and citations, and there is there's there's very little helping. And I I told every employee when I hired them uh, when they come into my office, I don't care how many tickets you write, I don't care how many rest you get that doesn't impress me you go out and help someone yeah. that impresses don't me. pass a car that's broken down you never pass well that one of the biggest heroin busts in the county came because one of the preaching, deputies me preaching to them you don't leave a car on the side of the road you stop and check it out and he figured out something wasn't right and he ended up getting a bunch of heroin <laughs> but uh, back in the days of middle uh how many times have we made arrests in the middle of the night on a car on the shoulder and come find out they just burglarized something yeah. or, you know, just, uh, you know we, we, <laughs> we used to love, and I still, you know, if I could do it today, I'd still be. I know you would. I, I would. I would give anything to be able to do it. I drive an entertainer coach now, so it's a different, completely different life. You know, people don't realize that when you spent so many, you know, I, they realize I was, I'm a retired Marine mm -hmm. and I miss that too. Yeah. But I can't imagine being told that I can't be something, you know, you know what I'm saying? Something that, I mean, don't get me wrong. Marine Corps tells me I can't come back because I'm too old. Too old, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I and I get it. I, in, you know, if I'm looking out, I don't look old. But if I <laughs> if I'm seeing the reflection, I get it. Yeah. Okay, so I'm old, so I get it. But if I had to give up my police license for something that I know I didn't do. And then every day, you know, when I see a police car, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, you know, I used to be, you know, I used I to used, help people like that too. Yeah. You know? and, I, and I do that all the time. You know, I still. I know you do. The, the other night when I left the, the hotel, uh, there was some kind of disturbance. And I, I stay in, it was a Marriott, not, not a dump. I stay in at a Marriott. And there was a, an issue in one of the rooms and the officers were going up. And I told them, you know, y'all be safe. And they just kind of looked at me and. This day and time, it's not a place for police officers, and it's not a place for some of these young officers that we've got now. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a there's a well, website. they're not being trained. They're not they're not trained to to uh, protect and serve. No, but there was one on one of the police websites the other night, and they were talking about they got a young boot that, you know, he he disrespects people, he talks trash to them, and blah blah this. And I got on there and I said, somebody better straighten him out now, before he has your whole shift in trouble. Well, and we he, used to do that. You know, we, we had issues with some young officers, and we'd put them off sides and say, hey, you pull that crap again, yeah. you're going to have an issue because you're going to be the problem. Well, it makes us all look bad if yeah. one guy's bad. You know. And, and, you know, yeah, I know we used to we used to self-police. I guess that's a word. Yeah, they don't, they don't do it anymore. No, they, well, they're not yeah. trained to do it. You know, yeah. they're not trained in the right way. And, Johnny, you probably hadn't seen one of the ones, one of the shows that I put up here is – ethics of a police officer when it comes to Terry Frisk. I've been watching this live PD. Great show. I cussed that in that, that uh, live PD cam. I cussed that when them guys are being stupid. Oh, yeah, doing, go right in the pocket. Doing whatever they want to do. And yeah. I just, I just, my wife's like, you want to watch something else? I'm tired <laughs> of hearing you gripe about this one. Well, it, my, my point is that guy ain't doing it because – He's doing it wrong. He's doing it because that's the way he was trained. He doesn't know what Terry versus Ohio. He doesn't know anything about law enforcement. And he doesn't and know anything. Yeah, because if you're because that's literally breaking somebody's constitutional or violating somebody's constitutional rights. The Fourth Amendment of illegal searches and seizures. We can Terry frisk, but we can't go in the pockets unless we can articulate that. That feels like some kind of a weapon. Yeah, and that's the only reason why you can you Terry frisk. Be able to articulate that. By feeling this, I knew that it was a 357 Magnum tucked yeah. down into his coin. Pocket. But it was so yeah. soft, it, it turned out to be a bag of weed. Yeah. That, Oops. You know, that violates your oath yeah. as, an, as a police officer. And not one person says this, and they have police officers that are providing this show. Not one of those. They, they pass it right up. They pass it right up. And I've always had a saying, even with my deputies, 
Do you treat everybody with respect to let you know when they don't want it? Yeah, and I've I've gotten 10 8 right in the middle of somebody's butt. (laughs) But they disrespected me, and I don't have to be disrespected. And, you know, but normally they don't disrespect us. No, nine times out of 10, uh, the the lady that, that went to jail back a few years ago in one of the courtrooms, uh, I can't remember her name. She, she, uh, they got her for contempt of court, and she wouldn't quit pressing the judge, and she got arrested. <laughs> Was that she, Melba? <laughs> no. She, uh, she filed lawsuits on me and every, everybody. She, the judge, the bailiffs, everybody got a lawsuit. But, uh, you know, she, she was always telling everybody how horrible Johnny Brown was. He did this. He did that. Well, I stopped her out here on the highway one day after that. The woman didn't even recognize me, didn't know who I was. And she's like, well, you're, you're a nice officer. You're not like the rest of them. And I wanted so bad to say, you know, you just don't know who I am. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't write her a ticket. And, and I probably haven't written 20 tickets in my whole career. I just wasn't a ticket writer. Yeah, you know, I, I've said this the other day, too, that I won't let my deputies carry a ticket book because it's too easy for the people to talk themselves into a ticket. Oh, it's very easy. So if you don't have a ticket book with you, then it's going to have a positive outcome with that guy who might be having a bad day that had nothing to do with us. And that's that's what you got to look at. Now, there is people, and I, I didn't tell the deputy they couldn't write tickets. I just told him I didn't care. It, it didn't impress me. If you wrote a 1,000 tickets, I, you're not impressing me. Mm-hmm. I didn't ever tell well, him they couldn't write them. But yeah. I always told him, you need to look at the circumstances. That person's having a bad day for some reason. Yeah. If you can let them off and lighten that day a little bit, do it. Hell yeah. You know, do it. Let them, let them think they got the upper hand. It don't matter. My wife just got a ticket in Arlington, this past week in a school zone. Yeah. And bless her heart. She didn't tell that the officer that her husband was a police officer. Yeah. Now there's two sides of that yeah. I'm pissed off. Cause we got to pay a ticket and it's double because it's a school zone. But the side that I really like is her more moral integrity. That she didn't start trying to, Hey, you know, yeah. my husband's a cop and he's yep. going to kill me. And see, I didn't even, I didn't even let my kids, uh, my kids weren't even allowed to use me being a police officer to get out of ticket. Yeah. Now I got some phone calls when I was at middle. I I got some phone calls from some of the officers that said, Hey, we caught your kid doing this or doing that. And, and it was handled. By the way, Kimmy, his daughter is a dispatcher down in Colleen, isn't she? Yeah, or- she's at Waco now. Oh, I didn't know that she's yeah. closer. Yeah. So, so, I mean, and my, I have a daughter in Alabama and one here in, I couldn't be more proud of them. I'm sure you are, but, but yeah, growing up, uh, you, you know, you had to put the fear in them that hey, I, every police officer in this town knows me. Yeah. So you're, you're going to get caught and you're going to be told on. That's uh, right. But the, 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 using the, uh, family law to get out of a ticket. I never, yeah, never, no. I even, I got a ticket when I was a sheriff out of Fort Worth. I, got, I know I got, that. Yeah, I got it. And he was working the 287 quarter over there uh, through Polly. And he pulled me over for 67 and a 60 and wrote me a ticket. And I didn't say a word. I, you I didn't did. say if, you, if if I was your chief, you'd be fired? No. That was only that, at the Waterburger. That Water- was only at Waterburger, <laughs> and that was because of the rudeness. Uh, a little you know, levity there, brother. He, uh, he wrote me a ticket for 67 and a 60, and I signed my ticket, and I went to court on it. Take your ticket and go on. That's you know that's what it's about. Hey, you remember when? And I know we're just shooting the breeze, but I, I hadn't seen you in a long time. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be more. I'll get you back, and we'll be more direct. But uh, I think people are going to. What I want for y'all to know out there that that's watching this that Johnny and I are good friends. Um, Johnny would have done anything for me. Still will. And still will. And, and vice versa, I would do anything for Johnny. And I know where his heart's at, but I want y'all to know him. You know, because, yeah, he was the sheriff, and maybe, you know, no one got to know him, or maybe a lot of you people never met him or never got to know him. You just knew he was your sheriff, and and everything was groovy like that. But I want you to know the man. And so that's kind of like why we're just shooting the breeze right now. But there's issues, legal issues, that I want to get in into involving Johnny and what happened to him. And it's just more, just to shine more light on the corruption that has been in Ellis County and why it's so important for us and for y'all to know what went on. Cause Johnny hasn't been able, you know, and I'm going to sit here. I'm going to, I'm going to talk for Johnny for just a minute. 
when all this stuff went down with me, um, Johnny never questioned whether I was right or wrong. In fact, he was fighting mad, you know. But the but the deal is, I was still ashamed to show my face in public because the people that don't know me might might believe the DA's office. I mean, I, might is not even a word. It's they will believe the DA's office. They'll think I'm crooked, and the defense attorneys will not let you tell anybody your side of the story. You can't fight for yourself. So the way Johnny is right now, I'm sure, because his story hasn't been, been, you know, the true story of Johnny Brown leaving has not made it out. It's going to make it out from me. I, I, you have my word on that. But I want it to where he's not, he doesn't feel ashamed to come into Ellis County. Because he did nothing wrong, and I'm going to prove it. You're all going to have the, you know, so when you see him, go up and tell him, hey, you miss him. You know, because he did a good job when he was a sheriff here. Sheriffs do different jobs. You might like one sheriff because he outfitted everybody with a Tahoe. You might like, you know, and think that's the best sheriff ever. You might like another sheriff for something else. The bottom line is, Johnny was a good sheriff. Johnny didn't leave here because you, the voter, voted him out of office. He left here because you, the voter, didn't have a say-so. I rode the railroad out because yeah. I was railroaded. You, you were railroaded. Yeah. And, um, and I want, I want that's the main thing I want to get out of t- today. I mean, I know we, we got scattered, but the main thing is Johnny hasn't been able to tell you his story, so you guys have – no reason to believe anything other than what you've already heard, and that's from the the uh, plaintiff side, so to speak. You yeah. know, the, the the lying side. The, I'll, I'll give you another deal. And we're not angels. No, yeah. I've never claimed to be. Every, everybody that knew me knew my story. I grew up rough. I grew up, you know, Fort Worth rough. Yeah, I grew up. I, I was uh, heathen. No, I, wasn't, I, I just wouldn't take crap from people <laughs> growing up. And, and, you know, just I didn't have a problem fighting when I needed to and, yeah. and things like that. Uh, but I always, you know, as a kid, I rode around with the cops and, and, and respected them. But uh, Tim Scott, the investigator at Midlothian, wanted us to come in and talk to him. Well, we already had attorneys, and attorneys said, do not talk. Yeah. Well, we're cops. We know that if we get somebody stupid enough to come in there and talk to us, we're going to lie to them and get whatever we can. Yeah. Well, our attorney said you're not talking to them, and when they set up the uh, the deal to talk to them, they didn't like the uh, the boundaries that the uh, attorney the attorneys uh, Tim Scott and them didn't like the boundaries, and so they they canceled our interviews. Uh, Tim Scott went out, and the 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 couple that was with Bobby and his wife, uh, I hadn't seen her in over forty years. hadn't seen him in over forty years. Uh, she was never in my group. I ran with the Cowboys. I, I was on a rodeo team and stuff like that in high school. She was with the druggies, and she was a drug addict. To this day, she's a drug addict. She's been to rehab so many times, it ain't funny. But Tim Scott went out and interviewed her that hadn't seen me in over 40 years. And one of the things she said that they, they brought out to me in, in the grand jury was, well, so-and-so says that everybody knew you didn't mess with the Brown brothers. Well, me and my brother didn't even run together. My brother was a jock. He ran with the jocks. I ran with the rodeo team. Mm-hmm. We didn't get along. Me and him fought probably as many times as he fought anybody else when we were growing up because, yeah. you know, he would try to push me around and I wouldn't take it. So we never even <laughs> ran around together. And, and this woman's telling them, yeah, you, know, you don't mess with the Brown brothers. That was that could have been further from the truth. They never even How checked they allow that? Oh, this was during the grand jury this is when Tim Scott was going go out in. doing interviews. He wouldn't do the interviews with the people. And, and and this lady kept saying, oh, I don't know what happened. I went in the bathroom. I didn't see anything. But the people that were there, they didn't interview. The people that knew that I wasn't intoxicated, they didn't interview. They didn't do any of those interviews. Yeah, they and didn't, didn't they interview drove. me, who I was with you up until 12.01 that yeah. night. Yeah. We, Mel and I just went home. We didn't stop at the Whataburger. Yeah. We, you know? Well, you know, we, we had I'm, to stay I'm in the clean job. So, you know, we had, we had to stay and clean up out there. My brother that stayed and, and helped clean up. Yeah. And they said, well, let's go get something to eat. Let's go to Whataburger. Well, some reason, I didn't want to go to Whataburger, but that's what they wanted. <laughs> this is Texas, man. And, yeah. You know. And so I said, well, y'all go on. I've got to lock the gate, lock the doors. Y'all go on. I'll be there in a minute. By the time I got there, Bobby was, I watched him fall into the ground. <laughs> I'm walking up the door. I'm like, what the hell? 
Yeah. You just hit my brother. Yeah. And, you know, Johnny, we're going to go. I'm going to get this to where this is going to be where they can see what we're looking at. Yeah. And we're going to talk them through what happened. And I'm, we're going to, I'm going to show them the law of what's going on and so they can put it the in. The law that I wasn't allowed to use that yes. law? Yeah. Yes. That's that's how to, and how to apply the law. Yeah, apparently it doesn't state in, in the law anywhere that as a police officer you can't use it because this law these laws were meant for everyone in the state of everyone. Texas. Everyone. Everyone. No, you had a duty as a police officer. This just protects you as a civilian, but as a police officer, you have a duty to Had I identified myself, and I didn't. No. Therefore, that that part of it to me is off table because I never identified myself, but I've got the law right here that says going to the aid of another is is not an offense. But as a police officer in Code of Criminal Procedure, if there's an offense within your view, not speeding, it's... No, no traffic violation and something else. But damn sure, if it's assault, yeah. you will act. Yeah. That's the that's the freaking law. Well, that that you know is in my county, but it was in the city of Midlothian. I'd already asked the lady to call. Mm-hmm. In fact, my deputy showed up before Midlothian did. Midlothian took forever to get there. I mean, literally forever. No, well, that no and, one told me it was a sheriff thing because they would have come. Yeah, they'd have been all over it. But my <laughs> deputy showed up, and I told him, I said, "No, y'all stay out of this." Stay back. We just, if you see any problems going on, then act. Yeah. Well, then the patrol sergeant showed up and he was there whenever I got ticked off at the mm-hmm. officer for being rude. And he said, let's, let's take a walk. And we did. Uh, Here, here's his better judgment. Me going over and telling the officer later what I thought of him for his rudeness. Yeah. Well, no one said you didn't have a temper, brother. Yeah. No, I, but I'm it's not that. illegal. Nothing illegal about it. So, yeah, I mean, we're not, you know, we're not. What well, they called um, groomed, like we should be groomed yeah. at, at, a, at our position. Um, well, that's what makes us better elected officials. If we work for the people that, <laughs> that's that right. support us, that are like us, yeah, we're it, not like the upper elitists that think they're something. You know, I, the way I operated was, I'll do what I think my voters want me to do, yep. and if they don't want me to do it, they'll vote me out of here, or they'll call me and tell me not to do it, and then by God. Because they are my employers, that's how I roll. I didn't care about Carol Bush or Patrick Wilson or yeah, I didn't Robinson. That's or what got me. Ron uh, let me let me ask you this: sure. How many times when you got elected, and I, and I got this so many times it wasn't funny. People that that you knew, you're not even the same ballpark. Your checkbook, you might as well just throw it in the trash. Oh, yeah, you yeah. you can't even you, you can imagine the. Hey, sheriff, me and the wife were going up to her. To, to Colorado or to California, we're going on a cruise. I'm like, no, I can't afford that. No, you ain't got to yeah. worry about it. Yeah. No, I couldn't run with you before I got elected, and I certainly can't afford to run with you now. The people, the restaurants here in Midlothian know that Melvin and I will not take a discount. Yeah. We won't do it. I tell them, look, I get a paycheck. I'm not coming here unless I can afford to come here. Yeah. So when I come here, I'm going to pay like everybody else. But if you give me a discount, I won't come here again. You know, Al's, the Taquerito, every one of those guys, they see me coming, and, and then I'll, I'll make double damn sure this is the normal price. Yeah. Yes. It's, and they don't like, they want to give police officers a discount, but there might be a day where I have to investigate Heck, yeah. them for doing something. And, you know, human nature is going to, it's going to, I know that I will be fair, but. Yeah. Could there be human nature I in there? Gave you, I gave you half off on your sandwich. Yeah. Now look what you're doing to well, me. Well, and I'm I don't blame him. To you. Yeah. But, you know, Dennis was my chief deputy for when I first took office. And I remember the first time that one of the vendors was coming to take us to lunch. Dennis called me aside and he said, they're not buying our lunch. And I'm like, Dennis Brewery, guys. The greatest man you'll ever meet. But he's like, they're not buying our lunch. And so you know, I'm like, well, why not, Dennis? It's a free lunch. <laughs> he said, they'll expect something. Yes. We pay for our own meals. And that's that listening. And one of the other things that I should have listened to, and I didn't, Dennis said, don't argue with anybody that buys their income 55 gallon drums. He, he had some, oh, he had some good sayings. Yeah. Uh, he and asked he, me when the, when the battle started with Carol, he said, is this the hill you want to die on? And I chose that hill and I died on it. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I, I chose it too. And I don't regret it. I mean, it was hard. It, don't get me wrong, it's not hard, but guess where, who's still standing? Yeah, exactly. Guess and who's going to be the only one standing? You, you don't you don't know how many times, and, and 
my wife will tell you. I've told her, you know, I'm so proud of Mike for, for sticking it out. I said, I, I didn't. And they were going to run her through the ringer, too. Yes. She, we were friends at that point. And they were going to run her through the ringer uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I they didn't, didn't want to hear what. Through. They didn't want to hear what she had to say. They wanted to they, they wanted, manipulate it. They wanted everything. Ward. They wanted everything they could get on Johnny Brown from the time he was in grade school. Yeah. And they proved that. Yeah. Uh, then they chose not to follow the law, and well, they chose to break at, the law at the yeah. But at at the advice of an attorney, take the play, you know, take the plea deal. It's going to get worse, dude. It, you look. And, don't and feel sorry for yourself because I don't feel sorry for myself. I'm mad at myself for not well, hold sticking on. it out. Well, it's a money thing. Yeah, I couldn't afford it. Right. You know how many people are over in that jail right now that are innocent but take a plea. You know how long it takes them to get out of that jail once they're That's in there? That's why they're taking a plea. It's it's I've seen many times where where they have used bail as punishment. <laughs> well, yeah, and, only you know, every time. I had I had some some good attorneys. I, I will tell you right now that that are not attorneys, but some some good judges. Uh, you know, I got tired of paying for babies being born in a jail. <laughs> yeah, and any babies die on your uh, watch? No, no. we just, we had. Uh, I was tired of having so little many many Johnnies running around, and I got with a couple of the judges, and they agreed with me. And we were we were PR bonding some of these Hell pregnant yes. ones. We've we we got a lawsuit from a gentleman that was deathly ill. Uh, he, he died after he got out of jail. He died, and his family sued us, sued the county uh, for for keeping him incarcerated. But he was he was a child molester. Yeah, and, well, see, that's different. We we stayed w- with. Was he a, a convicted child molester? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we stayed with it, and we held him. Uh, they they had another county down on the down on the coast that wanted him, mm-hmm. and we called and advised them we're through with our charges on him. But this man is deathly ill; he's probably going to die. And they said we want him. We took special care. We put, we didn't put him in a transport van. We put him in one of our cars, and we had them drive him straight there, give him whatever breaks he needed. Got him there, and they let him go. Once he got there, they let him go. He came back to Ellis County and died. But <laughs> you know, we worked. With the, with the attorneys in the county, we, we did a lot of things. I, I set it up where the attorneys could come in and talk to their inmates or to their clients, my inmates. Yeah. After hours, they could push a buzzer and go in and talk to them. Uh, they had an issue with the uh, the room they used. People could hear, so we sound deadened it. They didn't really like that, so if they needed to go in the back, we let them go in the back. We let them use the conference rooms and everything else and wouldn't let deputies stand around them. We tried to work with, with the defense attorneys but there were so many of them that, that get high bonds, and some of them need them. Some of them are frequent flyers that safe pee to me is the biggest joke in this the whole state because they keep letting these same offenders go oh, to yeah. safe pee. And yeah. then they get out, and they come right back to Ellis County or Tarrant County or wherever, and they get caught again. It's like, oh, please let me go to safe pee, and they do. Mm-hmm. But the some of the judges worked really well with us on getting inmates out when they had health issues or pregnant or, you know, but you know, it, so many of them can't afford it because their body is so right. high. Yeah. Uh, and they sit over, you know, and I wasn't part of that part of the system until, you know, it came down to me getting arrested over and over and over again. And they use bond as punishment, as punishment, yeah. you know, $25,000 bond for somebody they know is not going to run. Yeah. I'm, like I said, I've never run for anything in my yeah. life. I damn sure ain't going to run from Jeff Ward yeah. or Patrick Wilson. I'll go well, to prison. You know, I, and I, I didn't, I didn't know Jeff Ward well. I know that at one point he and he and Bob Offer, uh, uh, Allwork, Allwork were working out at the the drag strip, and the manager come out and told me she didn't want them out there anymore hmm. because they would sit around. Well, come to find out, that instance she was wrong. Uh, she said they went and ate food that was for somebody else. They were invited in there, but that's every time they worked on a pretty job in the county, they'd sit around and do nothing. They'd, they'd hang out together. But Jeff, I popped his niece one night. Uh, she was like 16. Yeah, she was, she was 16, I believe, with a bunch of 19, 20 year old boys, and they were all drinking. Mm-hmm. And she starts throwing his name up to him. Well, I didn't know him. That's how I, I ended up meeting him, was I called him out to take custody of her, and we arrested a couple of the guys, but. You know, professional courtesy. 
she kept throwing his name out. I ended up calling him and saying, hey, I've got your niece out here. Uh, not one time did he say thank you and I'll take care of this or nothing. He just took her and she ended up more trouble yeah. later. I, you know, I got a, somebody messaged me the other day uh, that knows him. And, and I'm not going to mention the name or how they know him because I don't know that they want to. But they're, Jeff apparently and his wife are users. You know, they use people, but they don't offer to re- reciprocate, yeah. you know, to help other people. And, uh, you know, it it obviously came back to haunt him. He got fired. Oh, he did get yeah, fired. Yeah. I didn't know he got fired. Oh, yeah. Finally? Well, he got fired um, right after I was found not guilty. Can you believe that? Well, oh, it, it all became his fault, I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> not, he, not the puppet master, but his fault. You screwed this up. He didn't get him well enough. Dude, he committed over 100 second-degree felonies, and they let him walk. I wonder if. Patrick put him on the list that he couldn't testify anymore. No, hell no. Well, probably not. Uh, but I'm going to see to it. Is is Terrell still there? You know, well, I, I, I would right love. Right now he is. I would love to find out if he got into my emails. I, I don't know how to go about it, but well, I think he got into mine as well as he did yours. Because well, I'm trying really? to correlate that I was running y'all's show. Well, I did ask Brian Ingram. Brian Ingram's the one that, that yeah. found out all this. Probably. Uh, Brian Ingram, and I asked him the other day. Pause those. Yeah. Uh, okay. You got lights on, bro? Yep, we're back. But the, the Ellis County, and I guess uh, I learned my lesson about politics. Uh, Pull that a little bit closer, brother. Okay. No, I guess sir. I've learned my lesson about Ellis County politics because they they – the ones that deem themselves as being the upper echelon don't understand that every one of them work for the taxpayers. You and I fully understood we work for the taxpayers and not them. Yeah. And when when that happens, what Mike and I got is what you get. If you run for an office and you're going to stand up and do what's right, yeah, you're going to get attacked. Well, they came after Paul Perry too, remember? Well, they've come after Paul Perry. They came after uh, Butler. Well, no, they couldn't. Butler, they couldn't that on that gravel deal. They yeah. couldn't. They couldn't. Oh, so it was just Paul. They well, they couldn't go after Paul. They had to stop going after Paul because they had to go after Butler too. Butler was one of their kids. Yeah, yeah. Butler did everything he was told. If if Carol didn't tell him to do it, then Ron Brown told him. I'm not. A, yeah. I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I, I helped Kyle Butler get elected, and I wouldn't piss on him. I, you him. know, I did too. And and. He yeah. made a comment. One of the deputies was standing when she was so worried about getting murdered. I actually had somebody sitting up in the upper floor of the. Oh yeah, she court. thought I was going to kill her. Well, I think that was after the guy ran over the courthouse with the car. Well, that was Uto. Yeah, but anyway, I had a deputy sitting up there, and and he point blank heard Kyle and her talking, and he said, "Well, if Johnny don't start straightening up, he's not going to get anything." And the deputy come and told me. And this man's a preacher, so he ain't going to lie. No, it. no. I, and so I lost all respect for Kyle Butler right then and there. Kyle, if you're watching, yeah. shame on you, brother. He, he's not going to watch unless Ron tells him he can. Well, he ought to be because I know there's he's going to have an opponent, and he's going to have a damn good opponent this next time. If I move back over here to this side of the county, he's going to have an opponent because I'm going to run against him. But I don't live in this county now because I got tired of that. I wish, you, I wish you'd come back because – it's not the county. It's the people it's the that are people that are running the county that think they're better than everybody else. But they're getting they're they're yeah, on their last leg. They now. need it. They yeah. need it. I mean, uh, Patrick's not going to be here after the January the first. You know that, right? Patrick needs to go to jail. I know. So does Ann Montgomery, Ann Montgomery. and so does Van Tine, Van Tines. Yeah, I you know, and I can't say a whole lot, but I can't I can't forward that, you know. Yeah. But uh, but other people can. You know, I mean, I'm not the only one that's been done wrong. You know, you're not the only one that's been done wrong. No. You didn't sign anything saying you couldn't. Uh, I haven't signed anything saying I can't say anything. And I'm right. I'm, I'm talking. And I, I, here's here's another good example. Okay. Carol Bush gets the, uh, the infamous adjudicating juvenile cases and they find out she's not. Yeah. Okay. Two years. The DA's office 
gets a special prosecutor to look at it, and all of a sudden, with a signed document that states what you do, that you have falsified a government document, they can't find enough to prosecute her. Not enough evidence. The same DA goes and finds a prosecutor to come in that Bob Carroll signed off on both of these, the one for Carroll and the one for me. Mm Mm-hmm. Bob Carroll signed off on both of them. Now, whether or not he did the interviews with them or whatever, however they do it, I don't know. But it's funny that I didn't break the law, and the law is very clear, but I'm prosecuted and and convinced by an attorney that I need to plead and go on down the road. And somebody that's guilty and you got the documents is found, well, we don't have enough evidence to prosecute. It makes... Yeah. That's great. Never spent a penny out of her pocket. Yeah. You know, you and I got Steve Egan elected. Yeah, we helped. That's how dumb we are. Uh, you know, I used I used to tell people that I was a pretty good judge of character. Well, holy shit, that freak! I uh, can't say that. Holy cow, that idiot! Uh, and I've told people he's dumb as dirt. You know, and I'm being nice to the dirt, probably. Well, I, I, my my issue with Steve Egan is I have yet to get a call since the day all this started. Oh yeah, I you're not good. Not, me and him were friends for years. Our families did things good. His daughter even got mad at me because I was liking your videos. Oh, well, did she? She got very upset with me and said, you were like a dad to me. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, here's the thing. I was done wrong. And You and were done wrong. Nobody stood up, and, and he sat right back, and, and he never let anybody you know, well, know, I, know what I stood said. up, brother. As you're much the only, as I you're could. the only one. Well, there's there's a handful. There's, and I'm not yeah. going to name names because some of them still work over there. Sure. There's a very small handful. Ray Stewart told me one time, when you're not sheriff anymore, you'll see how many friends you got. Yeah. He wasn't kidding. Yeah. Uh, I've still got my Hi, quarter. Ray. You're still my brother. <laughs> He's always been a great man. I love you know, I need to get Ray on here. The three of us need to come on. Oh, <laughs> that'd be bad. Ray fired me one time. <laughs> <laughs> no, he fired you several times. And then asked you where you were. Yeah, he fired me one time for real, fired me. How come you ain't here? Yeah, you fired me yesterday. Oh, get no. your ass in here. Ray Ray was no nonsense, and I, I loved him. Ray, Ray, to me, out of all the sheriffs, and I love you, brother, but Ray was Ellis County. Yep. You know, I mean, when Without you think of Ellis else. County, you think of Ray Stewart. Yep. He, he, you know, our guys our age that are yeah. in the circle, you know, yeah. that um, you and I – I don't look at you and I like that because this just seemed natural for us. You know, you, when you told me you're going to run for sheriff and I mean, that's, I guess that's the first time it even dawned on me that, holy cow, yeah, maybe we can do this stuff. You, you know? know why I ran, right? Uh-uh. Because one of the investigators there was dirty as the day is long, pulled me in his office and told me he was running for sheriff and he expected my support. And before I could zip it, I said, well, I'm running too. <laughs> so. I remember asking you, I said, Johnny, you sure? I'm, I'm going to be the next sheriff of Ellis County. I, All right. I was tired of the corruption. I yeah. was sick of it. And, and it came and got, got you. Me. It got you got in me. the end. If you'd yeah. been a deputy, you'd still have a job over there. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, I'd still be rolling them, trolling. But, you know, I had people that, that I had a, a – you remember the incident where the Dallas officer punched a kid in the stomach? Kid was like 19 and the girl was 15 and they were out on a back road parking. One of my deputies caught them and the Dallas officer, when, when my deputy wasn't looking, punched the kid in the stomach for having his daughter half naked out on the back road. <laughs> and uh, they uh, they got upset. They they wanted to do the talking for their son. And I told Chuck, they were meeting with Chuck Lavak, and I said, no, the kid's he's old enough to talk for himself. and We don't need his parents in here. Yeah, and they they hammered me every which way but Sunday, and then they said that I let the Dallas cop go. Didn't we filed the appropriate simple assault, you know, class C misdemeanor on him. It went through the JP court, and he was found guilty and fined. But those those people to this day, they still I'll get on Facebook every now and then they'll they'll have hammered me about something. Yeah, and yeah, somebody hammered me the other day, uh, but it was on YouTube and said I was. He said he couldn't buy into my story because I was just another disgraced politician. I was convicted, and I'm another. I'm well, like, you know oh, what? Well, time people, out. You're not convicted. I'm convicted. But people are sick of the politics. They're sick of it. And yeah. then you get guys like us that actually do what we say we're going to do, and we work for the people. The other politicians get us yeah. or try to. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, and they. And I'm telling you, man. 
I, you know, th- they put so much to bear against you that, for instance, you you told me that night that you, 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 I just can't take anymore. I'm tired of fighting them, Mike. And I try, remember. Yeah, and that, I couldn't. I was literally, you know, I, I almost I almost put a bullet in my head yeah, I over know. all this crap. I know. To the point that, that I had to. I had to resign and get my sanity back because yeah. I couldn't take any more, and I didn't have any more money. That was the, that was the kicker. I, I'm broke. I don't even have my own home. Uh, yeah, and they offered you a way out of the 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 mental stress. Yeah, and, and I have I have an attorney that advising you to take the deal. He he point blank said you need to take the deal. He said now it's your choice, but here here's what it is: you need to take this deal because they're going to file on you for this. And at one point there was even talk, and, and I never heard it straight from them, but there was talk that I had, they had a witness that apparently the next charge was going to be uh, a racial deal because they had somebody said I called uh, Matthew a, a wetback. Never happened. Never, never happened. Never seen a racist bone in your body, ever. I've never heard you say, you know, some of those derogatory words that, other people say oh, I've, I've never I've probably said them. I just don't make a habit I've of them. I've never seen you say uh, them, uh, you know, but I've never seen you treat anybody other than equal. I'm, I'm, but, and I'm not just saying that because that's, that's what I was told though. Is that was going to be one of the next ones coming up the pike? Was this was a racial yeah, attack? They were going to run you out of money. Yeah, they didn't care if they any just, of this was. They, they, they weren't going to ever go to court with this. They didn't know I didn't have any money. So, <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't know how how much money you had, but they knew that. They would never go to court because they'll just keep piling. That's what they did to me. They piled exactly, nine charges on well, me. Well, we talked about that after the second or third charge. I said, Mike, they're going to keep putting charges on me. Yep. They're going to keep doing it. And they did. They just kept piling. And whether they were, if, even if they would have looked halfway decent, it would have still been a scam. But yeah. the cases didn't even look good. Yeah. yeah. And I, I tell the people, you have to meet the elements of the offense. You have to have the elements of the offense. Are you telling me the DA doesn't know what the elements of the offense are? Or is that is that They're what, what he's I'm making. trying? Huh? They're what the ones he's making. They just they just don't. What? They just don't know what they're doing. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I asked. I did an open record request for. I wanted to see the complaint because uh, when they file a complaint against a police officer, yeah. it has to be sworn to, and it has to be given to the police officer, or there's no complaint. So I, I didn't I didn't have one for two and a half years. I never had a copy of it. So I did an open record request for a complaint, the complaint against me that started all this, right? Mm-hmm. You know what they this so this guy by the name of Robert Shell, he's a new ADA. He comes out, he tells me it's ready, it's gonna cost me like a hundred and something dollars. And I go in there to pick him up. No, it wasn't hundred something dollars. It was like forty something dollars, I think, for a hundred and something pages. I yeah. think's the way it was. Uh, but I, it's all the receipts. It's receipts from my office, right? And I said, I'm not paying for that. These are receipts. I already got. Them. They're my receipts. You just got a copy of them. I want the complaint. Well, we consider this a complaint. I didn't know he was an ADA. Yeah. I just knew he was new. I said. You're saying that this hundred stuff, you're saying receipts are complaint. He goes, yeah. I said, are you ADA or an investigator? I'm an ADA. I said, pardon my language. I said, I can't effing believe you don't know what a complaint is. I'm not going to argue with you. There ain't no argument There's to it. Argument. You don't have it. They never had a complaint, which is a lawful requirement to go after a fireman or a police officer. You have to have a written, signed, and sworn to complaint. Never existed. And so you're going to, they're going to try to get me to believe that the DA, Patrick Wilson, didn't know what a complaint was or didn't know the law. When he's the guy that interprets the law, he's the guy that I got to write a letter to to say, hey, I need advice, you know, on this law. That's why they drove to Colleen because he'd already said multiple times he he didn't want to prosecute. I didn't hit him. But they drive to Colleen with the video and they keep showing it to him and saying, this is where he hits you. You need to sign this complaint. You know, I'm going to show the video, guys. It's not this time, but Johnny never, he swung. Don't get me wrong. Well, he swung. Definitely swung. Never made contact with the guy. And it cooled down pretty quick. I mean, literally. Within three minutes, 
Matthew and I were standing there talking. Yeah. My brother comes back in after him, and I stepped in front of him and told him, if you put your hands on him, you're going to jail. Well, Bobby did push somebody. Did, was it Longoria he pushed when he came back in? I don't remember. I, I just, think it I was. I just remember getting in front of him, he's going to jail. Yeah. And uh, and, and rightfully so. You know, he – yeah, without any doubt, Bobby Bobby should have been put in jail, and the other kids should have. Been if put it had in been jail. my blood brother, I, I would I would be the same way. I mean, our integrity only means what we use it for. Yeah. You know, it, it's not you know you can't just say, well, today I'm going to use my integrity. So if it's your brother, I didn't, I didn't try to use the fact that I was a sheriff. I mean, I could have stood up there in front of everybody hollering, "I'm the sheriff, and this is how it's going to be." But well, I didn't. I I truly think that if I'd been the sheriff, uh, and I almost ran this time, but I. Uh, I, I truly think if I was the sheriff, I would have I would have told him after I thumped on him, hey, I'm the sheriff here. I know the law. We're you're gonna be in handcuffs is what you're gonna be. And then we'd sort it out like we do every time. You separate the parties, you talk to each uh, each of them, you find out if there's even an offense, is it mutual combat? Yeah. How did it get started? Was you know none of none of that was done on none, our side. Uh, yeah, right. Right. We, we were never I was never asked. What happened or how it happened? Um, yeah, they, they one of the officers told Bobby to leave. I don't know which one it was. He was standing outside the door. Um, how idiotic is that? It was it was a big mess, and you know, during, and I, I still don't know what the grand jury decided. Uh, well, I, well, you never had to pay uh, any bond or anything like that, right? So yeah. there was never. Oh, you were indicted. Yeah, you were indicted because you, yeah. you you pled. So the grand jury indicted. Yeah, I don't know on what charge. Yeah, I don't either. But uh, I, my attorney never got that for me, and I asked for it. But he never. Once, once this case wrapped up, he was gone. I never heard from him again. I called him two or three times, and never got an answer. Well, I did but, do. I told you, I, I did an open records quest today to get records that now. I don't know what it might be a battle between me and them, but I want to get everything that was all the supplemental records. All, you know, the supplemental reports, the actual report. I want body cam footage. I would like to, a copy of the Whataburger footage because I know it's it's going to have to be in your case file. And I want, it, I want to go through it sentence by sentence by sentence with somebody uh, that's outside looking in. Yeah. We could maybe Bob Armitanger or maybe there's another guy that's a special in, investigator on my Deal not. I'm not getting into yeah. what's what's going on there, but uh, somebody that's separate to look at what happened and yeah. Have, what's what when you put that video, put the whole video up because you'll see. And I don't remember who he was. I, I I know I know I knew who he was, but he wasn't part of that group. And somebody mounted off to him, and I turn around. This guy's whipping his shirt off. He's ready to go fight. And he I'm came like, in with you. They walked in behind us. Yeah, well. Uh, and I know who he was, but I can't think of his name. He wasn't a part of our group. They weren't with us. He oh, was, really? No, See, he was with uh, uh, Casey. Was Casey um, Griffin there? Casey Griffin. He was there. Oh, I uh, didn't know they, that. They, they, they wouldn't accept his statement because. Oh, of course not, because of history, history. Yeah, his was. history. But the other guy, and I can't think of his name, saved my life. But he he went to ripping his shirt off to fight somebody else, and I'm like, no, we're done yeah. with all this. And the guy and he was going to fight, fight wasn't with those guys either. It was it was another group over in the corner running their pie holes and, and wanting to fight. Yeah, it was it was chaos in there for about the first three or four minutes. It was chaos. And, I, and you're right. Once it got calmed down, I stood there and talked to Matthew Longoria, and when my brother come back in to assault him, I told him, "You're going to jail. Get your butt outside. Stay right there." Mm-hmm. Uh, but the pressure uh, of, I guess, I don't know if it's fear of the law enforcement or what it was, uh, but multiple times, even Jason Whiteley called him and asked him, you, you stated multiple times on your videos at the Whataburger that he didn't hit you and you don't want to file charges. What changed that? He said, well, Middle Earth and police officers drove here and he gave their names and, and said that, they showed him the video multiple times, and they slowed it down and said, this is where he hit you. This is where he hit you. We need you to sign this affidavit. Mm. That was his words. And you said uh, now you think it, he's running that party line with Midlothian PD right now. He he probably wouldn't be somebody that – Oh, I don't have a clue. Uh, I know you can look him up on Facebook. and he, he, That's how I found him. And I, yeah. you know, I, I told him, I, said, you know, I, I understand you're a young Christian man, and I'm praying for you. I just I just hope that someday you'll you'll understand 
what you've caused. The, the, the people that I've helped in this county and, and the things that I've done don't show who I am. Right, right. And, and Yeah, there's no mitigating. They didn't use any of that to mitigate your involvement at all. Uh, you were you were targeted. You were you were in a bat. You were in a the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, you know, and and you know me. You've you've even said it yourself. You're you're the person that can't stay mad. You know, I'm. I'm <laughs> no, I can. You, but you, you can. can. But you know, I'm a Christian and I believe in prayer. And and it's this is one of them that that I keep picking it back up after I'm afraid about it and. I don't hold animosity toward them like you. You'd like to see them burning out here in the street. I don't have that feeling. I, I'm I'm hurt at what they did mm -hmm. and the dishonesty about it. And but I've prayed for Patrick. I've prayed for Carol. And oh, I pray. I have my days where <laughs> hey, I just soon see them burning. But that's because I keep picking it up back up and and dwelling on it. And it's usually when I see it's PTSD, some, Johnny, is what it is. Well. When usually when I really get to think about it, I for the longest and I still have bouts every now and then of not being able to sleep because of it. Yep. And that's PTSD. Thinking brother. of how how it was done and and how crooked it was. Uh, every time I see a, a cop doing something on a call or something, I just like man, I wish I was able to just back him up or or be able to do this or that. Uh, they they the, the title of sheriff I could give a crap less about. It was the getting out. It was the title of police officer. The police officer. That's, I, that's, I'm with you. That's, that was me. I was a cop. Yeah. The only reason why we're poli in political arena is because it's a requirement for the job. It is. You know what I'm saying? It I, is. And unfortunately. You don't get hired as a sheriff. It becomes politics. You, yeah. As a police officer, you get hired and you're told to go uphold these laws and that's just what you do. Yeah. As a politician, you, you yeah, uphold you, those laws, but you do what they tell you to or you get hammered. Yeah, and and we have to interview for our job every four years too. Yeah, you know. Yeah, job performance. Yeah, it's job performance, and probably rightly so. But it, but it's so much different than being a why police chief or. Why don't we start a a push to make all politicians have to go through an annual review board? <laughs> That'd be great. Okay, what did you do this month? <laughs> I really didn't do nothing yeah. this month, but. The last four months I've been politicking. Be like, all right, bring in the next crooked son of a bitch, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, I I would never if I'd have walked through the jail when you know when you were the sheriff down there. You know, I've been through the jail plenty of times. Not being booked in. Well, four <laughs> times there, but <laughs> other than that, damn. Uh, and somebody would have came up and and told me, hey. I was framed by the DA's office. Oh, I got that all the time. I was framed. I didn't yeah. just do that. I, I wouldn't have believed him. I would have. I would have let him down easy. I wouldn't have said, you know, you're lying. You know. Yeah. No, I. Just but now always, I don't know. Yeah, I just always told him, hey, you know what? I'm I'm not the judge. I'm I'm just yeah. I'm the sheriff, and I oversee this jail. But that's something else. You know, I, I was constantly taking people on tours of that jail because I was proud of, of sure. the men and women that worked in there and the job that the captain did. And we had other agencies coming to look at our. Who, who was that captain? Terry Ogden. Hey, hey Terry. Terry. <laughs> but you know they they did a great job in there. Uh, we started all the the work programs that are now gone. Chuck Edge took everything out. There's no more of uh, the uh, SAP officers. He did away with all that. Really? Yeah. Where I had inmates. You know, somebody would call just for instance over here at Makeda, and uh, I can't remember that road. You go over the old the old bridge. Two A seven in Makeda. You go to Makeda. You got Stevie Mike, Makeda. Uh, I can't think of my road. Anyway, there's there's an old bridge there, and you go you go over it and you make a curve. Oh oh yeah, and go down that dirt road. No, it's not a dirt road. It's a it's a paved road. It goes all the way back up. Plain view. It's plain view. Man. Or Shady Grove. I don't know, but the the inmates would go out there. I bought these these uh, cutters that would cut the big grass like a dr trimmer. Oh yeah yeah yeah. I bought that. They would go down there and they'd cut around where people could see coming around that curve. They picked up trash all over the county. People would call. Even the commissioners would call. City of Middle Ethan called when they were redoing Kimball Park. I sent inmates over there to demolish the old toilets and stuff for them. Really? Saving taxpayer dollars everywhere around here. I had all of the uh, county vehicles were allowed to come to the, to the shop. I would not let inmates work on police cars. 
I made the two mechanics there understand yeah. that I didn't trust them not to cut a brake line or something. <laughs> but they could work on other cars, changing oil, and I opened all that up. We did a lot of things to save money for the taxpayers. Oh, I know, I know. That's and that's never been put out though. It it, it won't be. It's so it's only about what piece of shit you yeah. did on Whataburger. Yeah. Well, your whole I'm you, a Whataburger you, bandit. <laughs> Wait a minute. So. Yeah. See, Johnny and I don't have any friends. That's why I got to do this canned applause. <laughs> No, that's not true. Uh, we uh, unbelievable. We have, we have some really good friends that that stick close to us. Uh, you know, we're fortunate when it comes yeah. to that. And and thanks, you guys know who you are. And um, you know, well, how my man, I just I don't know what we've done to to garner that kind of support from you guys. And I don't know what we've done to got to garner the the ire of some of these people too. But yeah. but. To finish my thought on the jail, if they would have told me, if, one, if an inmate would have came up to me and said, hey, you know, the DA's office framed me, I didn't, I'm innocent, I didn't do this, like I said, I would have let him down easy going, yeah, you know, bless your heart, you know, and tell your lawyer and all that. But I wouldn't necessarily believe it because I, my at, at the time, before this happened to me, it was like, there's no way a DA would break the law. There's no way. So yeah. the guy's just pissed because, you know, of he what, got caught. He got caught. Yeah, no. It's, but now I'm like, how many innocent people are over there that don't have the money to bond out, and so they can't feed their family, they can't feed themselves, they can't make the car payment or the house payment, so they end up losing everything. They lose everything, and there's been more than one. And they just eventually they just they just plea. Now they're convicted. You know, you can't, you're convicted if you take an Alfred plea. Even if they take an Alfred plea, they're convicted. But they plea so they can go support their family. And everybody laughs about it up there in that DZ. It's got to be. I mean, what are we freaking doing? Well, it, it used to be they get away with it easier uh, until people like Mark Griffith. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, attorneys like that. Uh, ben, Monica you know, Bishop, those people. I'm telling tell you what. Monica lit me up one time <laughs> out in the lobby. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Monica will tell hey, you. Hey, Monica. Hey, love you. <laughs> but, uh, you know, even even Mark, Mark was hardcore when he first started coming over when I took over. Yeah. And uh, the DA would get mad because. Mark I, don't I, pull I was, any punches. No, he never has. He'll tell, <laughs> he, he didn't care I was a sheriff. He would tell me exactly how it was. <laughs> and, and he'd come over more than once to fight for his client. Uh, in my office, and and I, I admire that. I've always had respect yeah. for him. Yeah. But there is so many people in that jail that could be bonded out. Yeah. And and cut down on taxpayer services. You know, my my whole deal really, I think, sitting here talking about all this. Yeah. I think my my very first downfall, the first tick, was when I refused to privatize the jail. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Uh, the, you know, that money. That well, lobby money came in to let, work. Let me tell you, let me tell you what, what started on. I started it. I'm the one that started it. But I was looking, Sheriff Bob Offer was looking for bed space. And he was sheriff where? He was sheriff of Johnson County. Okay. And he had he had his his jail was actually being run by one of the corrections companies. And they were looking for bed space. And I said, Okay, what do we got to offer? And it was going to bring maybe a hundred thousand, hundred and fifty thousand a year, something like that, for the number of beds they wanted. But they provided meals, they provided the laundry service for their. All they were doing was renting beds that we already, because of the way that jail was designed, the air conditioner is always on, or the heat is always on, and the lights are always on. Mm -hmm. So we're paying for all that, and all I was looking for was to cut that bill some. That's how that started. And then all of a sudden it's we're gonna privatize. And you watch the whole that, jail. The whole jail was gonna be privatized. But the sheriff is still the one that gets in trouble. Yeah. Something's wrong. And I'm like, no, that ain't happening. <laughs> yeah. They sit there and let me get beat up. All the commissioners sit there and let Carol Bush just hammer me. And it's it's one of the recorded sessions. We need to find that. Uh they just hammered me and hammered me till finally uh Lee Alvenshine was was the uh, one of the county attorneys. He was on the civil side. He was on civil side, but he was a good, honest man. And he still finally is. stood up. Yeah, he finally stood up and said, "If the sheriff says no, you're beating a dead horse. This is closed. It's over." 
And from that point on, it just steadily got worse. Oh yeah, and and worse with Carol, to where I because you publicly beat her. I I publicly didn't do what she wanted. Yes, Uh, you know they. There were so many instances where she would confront me, and I wouldn't want to so bad. Yeah, jab back. I didn't jab back. I walked away, to the point where I started letting Dennis, and then when he retired, I let Brad handle them and they both did a great job they, they did a great job yeah uh, brad norman is one of the best men you'll ever meet let's stop for just a second jb okay that's what i call him you know johnny and, and brian look in this middle one here okay and tell them who you are and and endorse brad norman do you feel comfortable <laughs> doing that i would in brad embrace brad norman as a sheriff for anyone brad is a no-nonsense <laughs> Get it done, guy. There was not a task that he 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 never failed me one time. Brad Norman as as my chief deputy. Brad Norman as my captain. Brad Norman as my lieutenant. Brad Norman as a fellow narcotics officer before he was ever promoted. Get the job done. Be professional. Uh, when Brad left and went to the Hida Group. We that was about the time that Julissa took over. Julissa Martinez is also one of the greats, but we met we met with uh, Julissa on one of the cases, and she pretty much told us we had trash. When you get him right, come back and see me. But uh, <laughs> Brad Norman will make the best sheriff this county's ever had, even better than me. So I would endorse Brad Norman anytime, anywhere. So what about do you have a? have a preference for commissioner precinct group? <sighs> you know, and I don't, I, well, let's just stop that one. Yeah, I haven't been out on that one. I haven't really, I mean, I don't have anything against Paul, but I don't have anything against Richard either. Yeah. So. I, I endorse Paul, but Paul publicly supported me when I was going through shit. Yeah, and Paul didn't do anything for me on my side at all. Just kept quiet. I mean, he went silent. Yeah, well, so. kind of went silent, but all of them did, though. It wasn't just him. He, he would, yeah, he would. He would still talk to me when no one else would. Oh, now he you would. Know? He would talk to you, but you know, uh, all of them, all of the commissioners uh, about, had no backbone. How about Johnny Brown for president? <laughs> Johnny Brown for president? <laughs> no, that's probably not how I'm going to say that. I'm going to say who who is your who do you recommend for president? President Trump. I mean, I, I think the man shoots his mouth off more than he should, and. He should probably be lifetime banned from Twitter, but he he's getting it done. But he's you know it's it's like the rest. It's what we've been talking about this whole show. They're politicians. Trump has got it done. You've got a you got a laundry list of lies from from the Democrats right now. Uh, you know if if Trump did something, you charge his butt too. Charge a Democrat. Charge everybody. Yeah. Just because you're an elected official, whether it be city, state, county, federal, it doesn't matter. You work for the people. You don't work for the other. How many? How many of these federal politicians are millionaires now? When they came into office, nothing because they're taking money. Pelosi, right? Pelosi's one. Yeah, you know they. <laughs> no, it's a. I don't even understand how they made all that money. Why they've been uh, in government service, but that's way above me. But I want to. I want to. I want to tell them about Trump here because you just hit on it. He's getting the job done. Here's a man that's, you know, I went through, we, we both went through some crap yeah. on a local level. Yeah. He, for four He's getting years. getting national level. Oh, my God. <laughs> for four years, they have not let this man breathe. Yeah. You know, he's been fighting legal issues for four years and still has managed to be, to have the lowest unemployment on record. On record, guys. Not just of the last 20 years or 30 years. On record. Unwritten record and, and the lowest unemployment. Let me let me expound on that, brother. That's a big word. What it's a big mean? word. That's the word of the day. Expound. <laughs> uh, when you put the right people under you, okay. I went in the Air Force when I was seventeen. I I have a GED. I don't hide that. But I had college degrees all around me. Some of them were excellent employees. Some of them <laughs> sent them down to unemployment office. They're not worth having. You've got to be smart enough to have smart people that know how to get the job done underneath you, and that's what I did. I knew just enough 
about law enforcement to be a cop. When I went to the National Sheriff's Institute, it taught me a lot about what I was supposed to be doing, and it didn't teach me a lot about the politics other than don't piss off the county judge and the commissioners, which I did. But <laughs> Trump has got people under him that get the job done. He's busy fighting these other idiots, and he has, at the end of the day, the same way it was for me, the same way it is for you. You have the final decision, but you've got to trust the people underneath you that are making those decisions and running the day-to-day operations of each individual position. I'm not going to call Mike. Mike's 21-year Marine Corps, okay? Uh, 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 I had four years in the Air Force. Now, uh, uh, <laughs> I worked on airplanes. I, I, I didn't go out and fight about anything else, but... I'm not going well, to. Well, I was aviation I'm, too. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not going to uh, take one of my generals that tells me, "Hey, this is an imminent threat, and this is this is what's going to happen." I'm not going to stop him from doing his job and reporting to me what's going on. And I'm going to look at those recommendations, and I'm going to try to pick the best recommendation out of his recommendations. I'm not going to say no. We're not going to do that. You know, this this is why, because it'll piss everybody off on the other side of the world. I could give a crap less about the people on the other side of the world. This is American money that we're giving away to everybody. So you oh got me God. on my soapbox now. I, apparently, I but did. I was just going to tell you. Back back to the pick the right people <laughs> and take their input and listen to it. And that's how you run a business. That's how Trump's run. He's got the right people underneath him that are running his day-to-day operations, bringing him, Here's here is the scenario and here's what we can do. And he's taking those advices. Well, yeah. And, and I, before he butted in, I wanted to. <laughs> Trump has not taken one penny of the American money. He don't tech. need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He don't need it. But, but you know, people like Trump, who, who's, who has money, obviously, the reason why they have money is because they know how to handle money. Yeah. The reason why I don't have any is because I don't know how to handle it when I get it. I know how to handle it. I just I'm just now getting back to where I have some money to handle. So, <laughs> but he has given his paycheck to charity. Not that he's left it in the in the treasury. In the coffers. He's taken that paycheck and he pub not publicly. What I mean, he doesn't ring a bell. Hey, look what I just did, right? Yeah. That's what that's saying something for the man. Well, there's there's some law and I don't know exactly how it works and I can expound on it there's that word again but Damn, if, that is if, a big word. if he were had had he went in there and said okay the president's not going to get paid they would have had to have been constitutionally voted on and then the next president wouldn't have got paid oh yeah that's just like when when uh here if we yeah. would not accept a pay raise yeah the next the next sheriff or the next constable or the next whoever is not going to automatically get yeah. that money it's said at whatever and that's it i didn't want to so, take a pay raise and i think paul perry he wrote a check back, I believe. Yeah, he. Uh, but but he hadn't written it back since then. But I wouldn't either. With well, all I that. don't know that yeah. either. But you know. But at one time, you know, here here he said something on principle, and he stuck with it. I, now I've never done that. I mean, don't yeah. get me wrong. It, I wouldn't have wrote a check back. I wouldn't have accepted it to begin with, and. Let the I next almost guy, didn't. Yeah, let the next guy fight it. Yeah, get it. Yeah, and then it it was explained to me that way. Yeah, and so uh, you know, I mean, it makes it's, it's, what I'm telling talking about sounds like I'm saying bullshit, but it's the truth. Yeah. During that time, we were getting a raise. We had the lowest uh, economy. Sucked. Remember? Mm-hmm. And in fact, I think you and I both discussed not taking a raise because. The people who voted us in weren't well, that's, getting a that's, raise. That's when we found out if, if – because yeah. it was me and you. We, we found out if we don't take it yeah. and and they pass it up to the next guy is yeah. never going to be on the same level. Yeah, and yeah. and I was willing to wait another year. Yeah. And no, it was going to be, oh, no, you – you know, so it was like – Yeah, we, we learned a lot about politics. It, and that's what way. it comes down to. Yeah. It doesn't – for you and I, it, it the people matter. It really, and it still does. Yeah. To them, they could give a rat's ass how much any court made, you know, these JB courts, yeah. how many tickets were wrote in the county, how much money. They, they didn't care as long as you kissed the ring. That's, that that's what the, it amounts to, kiss the ring. You know, I worked, even as sheriff, I worked off duty out of the county. Yeah. Different deals. Uh, I put that money in 
I had like three different checking accounts. And that's, Big when, bang I had, that's when I had money. But I put No wonder in. you got a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, that was from all this stress, I'm sure. I'm sure. But you, I put that money aside. And like I said, I, I helped people. I paid for funerals. I paid for trips. I paid for tired. Uh, even my employees uh, come to me, man, I can't make my car payment. Nothing else need to be said. One one come in, kids were starting school, had no money for clothes. Nothing yeah. to be said. That's what I used that money for. I had a couple of my deputies attacking me. Oh, the sheriff's out working off duty. Sheriff was in the office more than any other sheriff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I was out working. Uh, I did cut back after I went to the National Sheriff's Institute. I did cut back on going out and working traffic. But I still, if I was out running around, I was patrolling neighborhoods. I made contact with people. I even got cussed out one time because a guy had his garage door open, his golf clubs was sitting there, and pulled up, knocked the door, said, hey, I'm Sheriff Brown, just letting you know you're... And he let me know that it was his garage, his house, and I could exit. <laughs> he could leave it open if he wanted yeah, exactly. to. Exactly. But, you know, I, you know, when we were in Midlothian Police Department, man, we are, we've got so much footage here. I'm just thinking. But when we were cops, we've got a lot of footage to go, you and I. Mm-hmm. But... When we were cops in Midlothian, that was one of our charters. If, you know, we would knock on the door, hey, or if, if it was late, we would, remember, we'd reach in there and we'd hit Push the button, the button and, and, and jump, then over jump over the, the, jump over the beam. Yeah. <laughs> and that was just so their, their items would be secured. And we didn't have the crime that we have now then, but we were proactive on it.